You may be wondering, what is the flip? Growing up along the coast of Lake Michigan, it always puzzled me how the water temperatures along the beach could be in the 40s and 50s during the hottest months of summer. It wasn't until I became a more knowledgeable salmon angler when I really understood the reasoning for such cold water temperatures. The flip or lake flip is literally when the water temperatures flip. As the first fall vibes and cold fronts come through the summer air, they're followed by northerly winds which turns the water over. When these winds blow hard for 24 to 48 hours, it brings ice cold water temperatures to the surface and it pushes the warmest water in the lake towards the southern end. When these conditions occur, it draws salmon and trout species near shore and towards the river mouths, which will often initiate the first run of mature kings and coho up our tributaries for their annual spawning run. Going into this two day adventure, our goal was to follow the salmon from Lake Michigan up into the tributaries. We decided to start day one on Lake Michigan as we predicted that the lake might not be completely flipped yet. However, we did predict that after another 24 hours of northerly wind, the lake would be flipped and on day two, we'd be able to find some of the first fresh runs of Chinook salmon up our tributaries. Well, good morning guys. We are just coming through the channel here. We don't think the lake is flipped just because there's a ton of hard south winds right before this north wind and the north wind didn't quite blow long enough. So we're assuming we're just gonna go out to the bank in about 120 feet of water. We're gonna start there, check the water temperatures and go from there. We had some big storms come through last night. We actually have a meteor shower going on right now. So this is looking really cool. There's a ton of boats. There should be some big fish around. It's gonna be a great day. Got hit on the way out. Oh, is he still there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> Guys, I was just putting this diver out and it got hit when I was putting it out. <laughs> wow, is that crazy? I'm not kidding you. This fish was only like 20 feet out, dude. I just was going to put the rod in the rod holder and this thing just clobbered it. Oh my goodness. That's just a good trick, guys, to always keep in mind when you're letting your divers out to let them out slowly because that falling action, those fish really go nuts for that sometimes. And this looks like it feels like a decent fish. I mean, he didn't rip out a tunnel line, but it feels nice for sure. Definitely a great start to the morning. Gosh, is this fish green, guys? Okay, here we go. Hand line time. Okay, I'm going to try to ski him on top. Oh, oh. Nice king to start the day, Mike. Nice net job. That's a nice king. I'd say a good 15 pounder. Awesome, dude. Nice, buddy. Great start to the day. Ooh. Fat fish, fat yeah, fish. It's all a 15. Popped off in the net, guys. The meat's all good. We're gonna put that right out. That was a nice little snag to start the morning. Well, that was cool, man. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Take him, bro. Take him, bro. We'll see what we have here. Oh, it's a nice fish. It's a nice chrome fish. It looks like it may be a nice coho. What do we have, Mike? Oh, it's a beautiful coho. Oh, my goodness. That's a gorgeous coho. Man, wow. That is going to be premium Great. eating. Breaks it up a little bit. We'll see how we do here today. We might fish Manistee or Onekama too. Fish, fish, fish. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, that wasn't in the rod holder two minutes. Not even, I just put it in the rod holder. Not even two seconds. Hardly. Not even two seconds. Literally just put the spoon in the rod holder. We changed it up. We had a Wonder Bright on it at first. Then I just put a UV green. I think it's a UV green Alewife Michigan Singer spoon. Gosh, oh, he's just head shaking, man. It looks like a king. I'd say it's a king. Oh yeah, that's a king. Okay guys, coming up here. Coming up here. We got shark fins. It looks like a nice king. Another 
king in the mid teen range, it looks like. Oh yeah, nice king, nice king, nice king. Nice king, man. Oh, he's just digging, man. He's got shoulders. Nice, nice snap, Mike. Nice. We got him. We got him. Another big, hefty, healthy fish, man. I got you. Nice job. Yep. Look at how healthy these fish are, guys. This fish is in the mid-teens, I'd say, but man, is he thick. Got some huge shoulders on him. What a beautiful king, beautiful sunrise. It's gonna be an awesome day. We're just gonna keep picking away at him and keep catching some tunas. Well, that's cool. Oh, rigger, 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 rigger. Oh my God, this thing is getting ripped. Dude, oh my God. Just guys, this fish is just diving down. The line is straight down. I, this is, that is a nice king. Just chrome as can be though. Oh, he's trying to get airline Mike. Oh, 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 walk back, walk back, walk back, bro. Got him, guys. Nice. We got him. Oh, man, that's a nice fish. Wow. Beauty. Whew. Dude, that thing is a beautiful fish. Look out. When we first started fishing this morning, the surface water temperature was 70 degrees and there was no stable thermocline below the surface. We had anywhere from 42 to 70 degree water 50 feet down. As the waves coming out of the north laid down, the thermocline and water temperatures began to stabilize by mid-morning. By late morning, the surface water temperature was now 67 degrees and we had a stable thermocline down 30 feet. These were perfect conditions to start bringing bait fish and salmon species into shallow water and near the river mouse. We got off the water around noon with a great box of mature king and coho salmon. The action throughout the morning was very casual, however. We caught fish from the time we started until the time we left, but it was just a slow pick throughout the entire morning. The key to our success was putting out a wide variety of baits and colors and spreading them all throughout the water column. We caught fish on spoons, meat rigs, flies and plugs, and had bites anywhere from 20 feet down below the surface down to 100 feet. But we're going in for a little lunch here. We're gonna get some lunch. We're gonna go back and I'm gonna go to sleep at about eight o'clock tonight. So the boat's running good though, so that's good. I just got it back from McDonald Marine. Shout out to those guys for getting me back on the water. And uh, yeah, time for a little local favorite then. Now. I'll do the whitefish dinner, please. Thank you, man. Whitefish dinner, baby. Can't go wrong here with that. Port City Smokehouse, fresh whitefish. That is fantastic. I tell you what, I sure got some sun today. I'm gonna go to bed at like seven o'clock tonight. It was a great day, we caught some nice fish. The winds held off. We're hoping that tomorrow we'll be able to fish in shore more. The wind's going right now and it's kicking up. So hopefully we'll get some more north wind and uh, it'll have the lake flipped in the morning. The rest of the day I spent with my fingers crossed that the predicted cold fronts and storms would hit our area. Each year around this time, I get the same feeling that I used to have as a kid, praying for a snow day. I stay up when I should be sleeping, excited and anxiously awaiting the storms. I find myself constantly checking wind speeds and local radar, but it's never until the next morning when we learn the real truth. Thankfully, that afternoon, the northeast wind started blowing around 20 knots and held up overnight. I woke up at zero dark 30 the next morning and I was like a kid on Christmas. I was so excited to find my drift boat filled up with water from an overnight rain and I knew that this day had the potential to be something special. Oh. 
little bump there. Well, we are back once again in the stealthy stealth craft, but this boat is gonna navigate our way down through some tight water today and hopefully into some chrome fresh August River Kings. Did you see that? Dude, that was a bob for sure. It set super shallow, too. He'll have that. He'll have that. Cromer, Cromer, baby. <laughs> Stay on there, baby. That thing is silver. <laughs> so guys, we're fighting these fish here. If you can keep your rod at an up angle, that's obviously the best thing to do. But like right now, I have to keep this fish out of the wood. So now that I got him away from the bank and off that structure, I can keep my rod at more of an up angle. But anytime he's running for that wood, I'm gonna keep my rod low. That way I can turn his head. My gosh, is this thing just thrashing, man. I'm gonna turn his head and I'm gonna keep him out of that wood. Okay, but once I get a hold of this fish, like right now he's on the inside edge, now I'm gonna keep my rod up high. I'm just gonna let my rod work, my drag. I'm gonna be smooth with all my movements. Just let that first tire out. That thing looks like a ghost, man. Look at, that thing is so silver. It is so silver, guys. This is like a big lake fish. Wow, look at how chrome and beautiful that fish is. That fish is so chrome. It is so chrome. <laughs> Wow, guys, look at how beautiful and chrome that fish is. It looks like a nice male. He's gonna have some phenomenal meat on him. That's no different than a big lake fish. He is so silver, so fresh, and we're happy to have him. Fish, bro. Dude, it was the lightest bite. It was the lightest bite. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, he's trying to get me in the wood. Oh my god. Oh my god. It barely went down. Very nice fish. Man, that is just one beautiful fish, guys. Look at that, that bait is just pegged right in her beak. What a beautiful fish, man. That thing is fresh, it's silver, and full of energy. What a fight. Okay guys, I'm just getting my stringer on her. I just bonked her so I put her out of her misery just to make sure we kill these fish ethically. And I'm gonna cut her main artery here right underneath her gill. And I'm gonna also snip a couple of these other gills here. I got my nice fancy kindergarten scissors. Doesn't take anything fancy. Okay, now we're gonna let her bleed out. 
We're gonna tie her up in the water and keep her in the water in the current for about 20 minutes and then she's gonna be nice and bled out and those skeins are gonna turn out really nice. So what this does guys is it gets all the blood out of your skeins so your skeins won't turn a really dark color and they kind of get mushy when they get all that blood in there too. So by removing that blood, you're gonna have a much better final product. The setup that we were using today is called float fishing and we were using chunks of cured salmon skeins for bait. For my rod, I was using a 10 foot 6 Raven Helix salmon rod with both a spinning reel and a Raven Matrix fully ported center pin reel. I had 40 pound test braided mainline on both reels and I was using a 20 pound test Seaguar Red Label fluorocarbon leader. I then attached a size 2 watt hook to my leader while using the snell knot. The snell knot allows you to keep that glob of eggs on your hook effectively and it allows you to fish those eggs for multiple casts. I was also using a size 8 gram Raven Fast and Deep float and I staggered split shot all the way from my float down to about 8 inches above my hook. That way I knew my bait was getting down in the hole to the level that the fish were at. If you're wondering exactly what skeins are, skeins are just simply salmon eggs that are still held together by membrane. They're immature eggs and haven't fully developed yet. But in a couple weeks, this membrane will develop and these eggs will become individual, they'll become loose, and they'll be ready for those fish to lay them into their gravel reds. After I remove these skeins from the fish, I will then cure them in a sulfate based cure for about 24 hours and they will turn out looking something like this. Stay tuned for next week as we'll be coming out with a complete how-to guide on how to catch river salmon. Plenty more. Oh my gosh, there he is, guys. There he is, baby. There he is. Oh, big one. Big one. Oh my gosh, the thing is huge. Here we go, coming down, man. Coming down, man. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Wow, dude. They're walking down past all this, all this job, guys. Holy moly. Jeepers, creepers. What a battle, man. This fish is huge. Holy mackerel, Whew. my heart is racing right now. Holy cow. Okay, we're going down with them. There's no coming back from there. I can't stop them, guys. I cannot stop this fish. Oh my goodness, I still got her, guys. I still got her, I still got her. Guys, this is absolutely insane. This fish is so far down here. I have not been able to stop this fish. I'm gonna run this clip all the way through so you can see that this is a 100% fair hooked fish. These fish just absolutely rip when they're fresh. Oof, I'm out of breath. This fish has such a big tail on it, guys. Wow, wow, he's still just putting up a scrap, man. He's really trying to get me in the woods. I'm gonna see if I can land him over in this marsh down here. There's some weeds, it's a huge buck. It's a huge buck. Oh my goodness, it is a huge buck, guys. I'm out of breath. Wow. We got him, baby. Wow. We got him, baby. This is close enough. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. This thing is huge. <laughs> this thing is huge, guys. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Wow. This thing is beautiful. Oh, man. Wow. Wow, guys, we got him. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. That fish is insane. You know what, guys? We're gonna let this fish go. I don't even wanna take him out of the water. I don't even wanna take him out of the water for a picture. I'm not even gonna go back up. This is good enough. I'm gonna keep him in the water and I'm gonna get him going right back. What a beautiful fish, man. I am so thankful to have caught that fish.
Okay, okay, buddy. <laughs> Guys, I fought that fish about 100 yards down river. I don't know how he stayed out of the structure and all the wood. It was just, I'm very thankful to have landed that fish. I got lucky, to say the least. I didn't take him out of the water. I got him unhooked, got him right back. I didn't want to walk him all the way back to Mike. I want to get that fish back as soon as possible because he deserved it. We're going to go back up, see what Mike's got going on, and hopefully hook a few more here this afternoon. Being able to find some of the first runs of salmon up our tributaries is always a special feeling. Although I'm sad to see the open water season come to an end, I couldn't be more excited for some cool fall weather and the upcoming salmon and steelhead river season. Going into this river salmon season guys, I just wanted to make a couple quick announcements. And that is one, let's all make sure that we're doing our part to keep these river banks trash free. Make sure we're all packing out everything we pack in and also help pick up the river if you notice some trash on the river banks. And if you see somebody polluting the river banks, call them out on it. That's just totally unacceptable and it totally makes us fishermen unwelcome in a lot of these places. And that is two, make sure we're fishing ethically. Not only is snagging unsportsmanlike, but it also completely shuts these fish down. When these fish first come into the rivers guys, they bite so well and they will continue to bite really well all the way until they spawn. But when they get ripped on, it just completely shuts them down. And I've seen it happen year after year after year. I've seen it happen so many times guys. I guide every single day throughout the salmon season and I've done it for the past eight years or so. When these big pods of fish come into the river, they will bite extremely well all the way until they spawn. But if they get ripped on, it just completely shuts them down honestly until they spawn, until they die. It's no different than hunting, poaching a big buck, or spooking a big buck out of its bedding area. Once that fish has those hooks drove into them and it's spooked and it feels threatened like that, it will not bite and it just ruins it for everybody who's trying to do it legally. So we just all have to make sure we're doing our part to set an example, be a role model, that way we can all enjoy this great sport and we can all catch these amazing fish. I truly wish everybody the best of luck out there this salmon season. Take these methods that we've shown you in our videos, float fish and skein, throw in thunder sticks, and take them to the river and you will be successful. I promise you. I hope you guys have a successful and great upcoming salmon season and we will see you on the water. Thanks so much for watching guys and if you enjoy this video make sure to go down below here and leave us a like and also subscribe if you're new.